Our next guest is an eight-time Grammy Award-winning musical icon, artist, philanthropist, activist, and author. Please welcome Ziggy Marley. Yes! Hello. 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 To be here with you so guys. So good to see yes, you. Yes, 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 yes. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, man, nice to there. Ziggy, yeah. I'm so happy that I get to meet you in person. Yeah, man. Now, you are the son of the legendary Bob Marley. Yes. What True. was it like? I can only imagine what it was like, you know, living with him and, you know, hearing the music. What was it like for you? Growing up, I mean, remember now in those days, he's not as legendary as he was today. Sure. Right? So, sure. It's a very humble um, upbringing, um, growing up, going to the studio, playing soccer, um, going to the country, just having fun and being around a lot of, like, a very interesting um, characters um, mm. and a very interesting time in Jamaica because it was a very political mm. okay. situation. And um, I just remember feeling, just, just learning a lot by being around him and, and watching him interact with other people. That's that fantastic. is incredible. Well, you've also been super successful yourself in music. How would you say that you keep your father's memory alive in your music? Well, it's more than just the music. You see, um, the legacy or what we what we what we are about, it starts with starts with who we are as a human being. Yes. So that is where the legacy really mm -hmm. established itself. And what and is then, that? Well, it's, it's being a good human being. It's being respectful of others, um, loving of others, and um, just trying to help each other out, you know, the best way we can. And that then reflects in the music. So the legacy starts with who you are as a person. And how we grew up um, seeing our parents be is the example that we um, continue. That's incredible. So good. You have written several children's books. What's inspiring you to go, like, outside of what we know, you know, you with your music? Yeah, well, creativity, for me, you don't have any boundaries, you know? So music is a part of who I am, but mm -hmm. I like to write. I like to be, I like nice. to expand my mind and explore um, uncom un uncomfortable places that I've never been before. That's how I grow as a person. And so writing is just another way that excites me to, to ex explore my own self. I love that. That is incredible. Well, your latest book was inspired by a furry new addition that you <laughs> added to your family during the pandemic. Yeah. His name is Romeo. So tell us about Romeo <laughs> and how he inspired a song and the book, uh -huh. My Dog Romeo. So, such a great name. Yeah. yeah. So, my kids, my youngest kids, you know, I have four young kids um, and like they've been wanting a dog forever. <laughs> Um, my wife was very reluctant because she's like, oh, a dog is like another child. Exactly. Mm. She's going to be the one taking care of it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm going to be on tour and... Right, she'll be with the dog. Exactly. Yeah. Luckily, nobody mm. toured last year. We were all at home. Oh, that's <laughs> exactly. right. Exactly. So perfect timing. Perfect timing. So we got the dog but right before the pandemic, actually. We didn't even know what was going to happen. So yeah. we, we got the dog and a puppy and thing. And she was right, man. It's like having another child. Like, For sure. I tell you, yes. man. Yeah, man. So... For the kids, them, they were surprised because I think they thought that having a dog is going to be like, there's no work, it's just, you know, play around. But right. they have to have responsibilities. Yes. But, I mean, he, he's like another human being in, in a way. His character, he's, he's, a, he's a specific character. He's an um, Italian water dog. He's hyperallergenic. Ooh. Is he? Oh. Which we need it for the kids. Um, Great. But he's just a personality, and we love him, and... Yeah, he, he's, a, he's a loving dog. He loves people. Oh. He loves everybody. You're just bright. You're so, like, when you're talking about him, you look so happy. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> a good, he's, a good, he's a good friend. He's a good friend. And he inspired me to write a song about him, which I'm easily inspirable. So I'm um, having a dog around. I know I would, I would write a song about him. And we, I love that. We put it on the children's album that we released last that year. That's so great. great. Um, and speaking of your wife, you and her co-wrote a book, Little John Crow. Yeah. Tell us about that. So Little John Crow... It actually comes out today. Yeah, today. It's out today. Little John Crow is a book we've been working on for a while. Um, it's, it's based upon my experience with turkey vultures. I grew up in Jamaica, and where I used to live, um, there used to be an open land, and the turkey vultures would hang out there. Um, so the idea came to me to write the story because over, over the years, I've evolved in how I think about vultures. Mm. When I was young, I didn't like vultures. Right. They were like scary. dirty, yeah, scary. Yeah, the stuff. average person, you hear the word vulture, right? and you're like, yeah, like, yeah, no. Yeah. Right. So, but eventually, I learned that the, how important they are to our ecosystem and our health, basically cleaning up you know, dead, really? dead animals and getting okay. rid of diseases and stuff. So I came to appreciate turkey vultures, and I wrote this story 
it's about a turkey vulture who doesn't want to be a vulture because oh. the ster there's a stereotype about vultures. Yeah. Oh, how and he doesn't want to be a vulture, so he has to find himself and accept himself for who he is. Mm -hmm. And then his community also finds out the value of each individual. Mm. And so that, that's what the story is about. So I, what, yeah, that's incredible. I love that you are easily inspired by things. I it's yes. really great. The turkey vultures yeah. inspired a whole book. Oh. But, but even listening <laughs> to you, there's clearly a deeper meaning in these books. Mm -hmm. What specifically do you want kids to learn from your books? Well, I mean, the first thing is love, right? The whole foundation of everything mm -hmm. we do is about loving. Loving one another, um, accepting each other, and um, being true to who you are. Um, so that is, the, that is the basic foundation of everything we do, is teaching, trying to try convey the message of togetherness and unity and oneness of humanity. Beautiful. Wow. Um, not only writing music, writing books, but you also have a nonprofit organization called URGE. Tell me about URGE. Urge. So urge is a thing we started a long time ago. Um, it means it's an acronym. So it means unlimited resources given enlightenment. Oh. And for me, um, you know, with the charity work, we, we, we focus on kids. We we adopt schools. We have a school we adopted in Jamaica, and we work with other charities in LA. We work with a charity called Hola, which um, does after-school programs for kids. Um, mm -hmm. And we also lend lend my voice to many different charities. But for me, the, the idea being behind unlimited resources is not about material things, ultimately. Mm -hmm. It's about, again, we'll go back to love, giving love. You know, children need love. This, this is what they need more than even material things, is to give love to them. So yeah. that, is, that is where the unlimited thing comes in, because money can be limited. Sure. But love. The yeah, unlimited anybody can resource. Afford that. Yes. Anybody can afford that. You, know you make me proud. You're so great. Yeah, man, thank you. You're I welcome. Just, I'm like looking You're at so him, welcome. and we just, we just can't stop smiling. <laughs> OK, Ziggy, we wanted to play a game with you today, right? We, we know you're fun. We're trying to get you to, you know, yes. let us know a yes. little more about you. <laughs> Since you love to write, we're going to give you some prompts, and you have to finish the sentence. All right. All right, let's get started. It's time for Finish This. Here we go. All right, the first one is, um, finish this. I get excited when? I get excited when I can have um, time with my family, because mm. I'm usually traveling, so sure. I'm really excited about hanging out with my kids. Nice. I love that. My guilty pleasure is? My guilty pleasure is doing nothing. I like doing nothing. <laughs> Same. Yeah. Same. I that. want to do nothing. I like doing nothing. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, that's that's it. Yeah. All right, finish this. I can't leave the house without. I can't leave the house without. Um, I always carry a water with me. I'm like one of those guys who likes to be prepared and ready for anything. So mm -hmm. I always have my hydration with you me. You do. Yeah, I mean, I live in LA, so. I'm on the freeway, who knows? Right, exactly, <laughs> for hours. Exactly. All right, one thing everyone would be surprised to know about me is? I like playing video games. You no do? way! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love yeah, playing video games. Yeah, I wouldn't expect games. that. Yeah. No, me neither. So. OK, my favorite cheat meal or food is? I like french fries. You like, do? Yeah, I like french fries. Who do you think makes fries. the best french fries? I was uh, just having this conversation know what? with I my mean, kids. You no, know, before I stop eating, Mickey D's, Mickey D's. Yes, <laughs> yes. The best French fry. I completely agree. We were just talking about that last night. Okay. Yeah. We agree. We agree. Okay. If I could have a superpower, it would be flying. I love. I love flying. I love. I'm, I was as a child. I've always been fascinated with flying and airplanes and stuff like that. So I, I love, love hearing that because I'm yeah. afraid to fly. Yeah. I was, so I love hearing that. Yeah. I've always been. It's such a thing to me. I don't. Yeah. I love flying. It's pretty cool. OK, if I could relive one moment in my life, what would that one be? One moment? Well, that's a heavy one there. Um, there's so many moments. I mean, you know, one moment, I was asked my wife, yo, let's have another baby. You know, I love like having, having the young baby and smelling oh, the baby. Oh, so when they smell I would, new. Yeah, they so, oh, man. So I would relive having, having my uh, daughter with, with, with my wife. Nice. Her, her name is Julia now. She's 16. Oh, so, wow. That was, a, that was a special moment. That is it's such a great age, yeah. right? When you start becoming friends, also. Yeah. Ziggy, thank you so much thank for stopping you. by and yeah, hanging out with us. Really, this was really awesome. We're always so fascinated with me. I feel like you talk and we just listen like you're a guru, like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us anything. Tell I us love anything. it. Ziggy's new book, Little John Crow, is out today. And you can also pick up a copy of his other book, My Dog Romeo, everywhere books are sold.